So in 1 Samuel 15, 23, Psalm, uh, Psalm, Samuel went, us, went on a sabbatical. Okay, let's just say it like that. I haven't read past this chapter. I'm not sure where he went, but he left, okay? So he left, but before he left, he knew that some people wanted to attack Israel, okay? He said there's somebody called the Amalekites, okay? Um, their nickname is Gigabytes, all right? So he said the Gigabytes, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. But basically, they was like, listen, listen, these Amalekites are attacking, okay? And he told Saul, when they attack, you are not to spare any of them. Women, the children, king, cattle, or sheep, anything. He said, kill them all. These people are very wicked and unholy. God doesn't want them anywhere near y'all. And Saul, he said, okay, I got you. But let me remind you what Saul said. Saul said, okay, I got you. In lamest terms. He said to Samuel, okay, I got you. Just remember that. You're probably just saying, why is he saying that so many times? Just remember what I, Samuel agree, agreed, okay? I mean, Saul agreed. Saul said, all right, Samuel, you go ahead and you take your sabbatical. When they come, I will kill all of them and we will be victorious. I will not spare anybody because God said, don't spare anybody. We're going to start at verse 13 of 1 Samuel chapter 15. So Samuel came back from his sabbatical. He walked up to Saul. I'm in the NIV version, by the way, all right? When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. First of all, you know, <laughs> if you're a parent watching this, have you ever had your child run up to you? Like, like let's say you went to work, okay? And you left them at home. And as soon as you get back home, they run up to you and say, Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. How was your day? Everything good? Um, how was work? Uh, were you tired? Do you need me to massage your feet or something like that? They just, and you know that they did something because they're rambling at the mouth and they're trying to distract you from everything else. So, like, for those of you who aren't parents, which many of you might not be because most of my audience is 18 and 24. So, let's say that you go out, you come back, and your dog has destroyed the entire house, trash is everywhere, blankets torn up, pillows scratched, and he's standing at the front door like... <laughs> Like, he did something. That's what Saul is like right here. I'm going to go ahead and read. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. Um, indulge my voice acting, please. <clears throat> but Samuel said, What then is just bleeding the sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of the cattle that I hear? Saul answered, <clears throat> The Lord's soldiers... I'm the Lord. Where did I see the Lord at? Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and the cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. Notice that Saul never said my God in this chapter. He never said the Lord my God. He always told Samuel it was his God. So is it possible that Saul never believed in God from the start? The Bible does say that Saul was humble, but there's a lot of humble people who aren't Christians. As I was saying, they spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, Lo, you were once smaller in your own eyes. See how I said he was humble before? Did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? So in other words, you became king, right? The Lord anointed you king over Israel and sent you on a mission saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage woe against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder? I'm not, still not sure what that means. And do evil in the sight of the Lord. Listen to the words that came out of this goofball's mouth. But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. So if your parents ask you, honey, did you finish all your homework? And you say, yeah, I finished all of it, except for math. Does that mean you finished all of it? it it's like Samuel was talking to a six-year-old. These are six-year-old excuses. Oh, I did all my chores except for brushing my teeth. That means you didn't do all of them. Let's keep reading. The soldiers, not only did they take back their king, the so Oh, voice acting. <clears throat> the soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord, your God. Here, there he goes with that your again. To the Lord, your God, at, Gil at Gilgal. All right. What makes you think that... I'm speaking from Sam Samuel's standpoint. I just said, if I was Samuel, what makes you think that God, even if you save the best of the best from the Amalekites after God told you to destroy them all, what makes you think that God wants something wicked? Okay, is God said they are very wicked people. Why would he want to, even if you were sacrificing it for him? Let's keep reading verse 22. But Samuel replied, 
Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? So in other words, Samuel's saying, God told you to obey him. He don't care about any sacrifices. He said, just do what I said. That's it. He didn't want you to do anything else. To obey is better than sacrifice, and the heat is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination. If you read this in the King James, it says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So if you're rebelling against your parents, witchcraft, the sin is equal to that. And arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Let's read the next verse. I mean, I didn't have this plan, but let's read the next verse. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Saul has done several rebellious things before this chapter, I believe. So, and Samuel forgave him. So he was like, you know what? I messed up. Let's get back together. Let's be bros again. But Samuel's done this several times. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you as king of Israel. And Samuel turned to leave. Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and it tore. Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom from, of Israel from you today. Wait, let me just continue the accent. And has given it to one of them, one of your neighbors, to one better than you. He who is the glory of the Lord Israel does not lie or change his mind. For he is a, not a human being that he should change his mind. By the way, comment down below if you want me to do a video on peer pressure because they were basically pressuring Samuel or Saul. I don't know if they were pressuring Saul. The Bible doesn't say if they, well, Saul says that they pressured him to take back the cattle and stuff from the Amalekites. Or did he use that as an excuse and did he just want to take back and be blatantly disobedient? The Bible doesn't say all that. But comment down below if you want me to do a video or not about peer pressure because that's basically what Saul, it seemed like he was going through people pressuring him saying come on bro Samuel ain't here Go and take some of the good cattle only take the good cattle take some of that cattle and we'll offer it to the God to God as a sacrifice I would not have enough patience to deal with somebody like that Like talking to a child or a six-year-old or something like that and you tell them give them explicit instructions Do not do this and they do the exact opposite